And Mexico is facing a number of other problems. The economy is stagnant, the murder rate is the highest in 20 years, and the president is proposing new solutions to some of those problems. We're joined now by John Ackerman. He's a professor of law at the National Autonomous Use of University of Mexico. He writes frequently on Latin America policy for a variety of publications. Welcome to our broadcast. A pleasure to, to be with you. Uh, we know the problems. Uh, security forces have been implicated in these repeated serious human rights violations like extrajudicial killings, enforced disappearances, torture. What is stopping the president from shutting down these acts of violence? Well, the generalized uh, theory, common knowledge here in Mexico is that he is um, actually in cahoots with the uh, criminals. Um, the, uh, both the criminals who are stealing money. There's a, a recent uh, scandal, the Odebrecht uh, scandal, for instance, reached to Mexico recently, um, that apparently um, his administration was paid $10 million to um, hand out contracts to Odebrecht and other companies. Um, and on the other hand, uh, the violence has been uh, very much orchestrated by the state itself. There has been a series of massacres. Um, just about every six or seven months, there's a, a new massacre organized by um, government forces. Uh, the um, most important international case of the 43 missing students from Ayotzinapa is now going to um, complete three years, I mean, the third, third year of anniversary, this 26th of September, in which the government has um, not gotten to the bottom of it. There is, uh, you know, there are a few of scapegoats in jail, but there has been no serious investigation in terms of um, up, um, up top um, complicity with the um, Peñanito administration. So in general, um, the problem here is not just a question of policy or technique or technocratic issues, um, but it's more of a political top-down um, problem. You know, you know, a third of the uh, governors who have left office over the last uh, three or four years are now under criminal charges for money laundering or um, uh, criminal activity. And most of those are very close to the uh, president himself, um, Peña Nieto. So there's a real collapse of political legitimacy, and that's the real central problem. So these are just serious allegations, we must point out. These are just allegations. Is there any, uh, is there a paper trail supporting these claims? Oh, yes, of course. I mean, you look at, look at all these uh, cases. Uh, we could we look at the re most recent uh, uh, case against the state uh, governor of Veracruz. Uh, Javier Duarte was one of the most important people close to Peña Nieto who um, financed his um, 2012 electoral campaign and is now under um, very important charges for uh, money laundering and criminal activities. Um, Tomas Yarrington, ex-governor of um, Tamaulipas, has been uh, recently uh, convicted, well, indicted by the United States government and is being held in jail in Italy. All right. Uh, um, these are just uh, two so of the examples. So let me jump in yeah. here, uh, mm -hmm. Professor. Um, there were more killings in 2017, correct me if I'm wrong, than in any year since the government uh, actually began releasing crime data going back to 1997. Now, this is now including tranquil areas like Cancun, Cabo San Lucas, uh, places where a lot of tourists frequent. What is going to precipitate a change? Uh, uh, political change. Uh, what we need is the empowerment of civil society. The problem is that people look at Mexico as being a democracy. Supposedly in the year 2000, there was a, a democratization because one party lost, another party won. Um, but then in 2012, that same old uh, party came back into power, and it looks um, very much like the same old system that we've had since 1929. Um, recently, in the state of Mexico, which is the most populated state in the country, which is also Peña Nieto's hometown, there was a gubernatorial election in, in June in which um, widespread um, fraud was um, at the uh, uh, light of day to all the Mexican people. Let's um, that talk about, state, for Professor, instance, let me jump governed in again. By the let me jump in again. Yeah. Let's talk about the heroin trade and the problem uh, with the demand for heroin, even in the United States, and how this is playing into it. Well, there's a very serious um, uh, pull factors from the United States, of course. Um, the guns are coming in from the United States. The money is coming from the United States. And this money is being used to grease the wheels of uh, of corrupt, um, violent um, politics. Um, that is a problem. You know, so Guerrero is one of the most violent states in the country, and there's one of the central heroin producers in the uh, entire world. Um, and so this money is coming in, and we really need to just kind of break this idea that somehow the problems in Mexico are just kind of 
local or uh, you know municipal governments or state governments or in society because of the narcos. No, this is a real pyramid, a pyramid kind of scheme in which um, crime and um, violence and violence and corruption um, goes all the way from the top all the way down to the bottom. Um, so Mexico really needs a real political renewal. Um, we have electoral frauds. Uh, this is just a, a real crisis. That's why Enrique Peñeto is so um, has so little support of the Mexican people. No Mexican president has uh, reached such a low level of popularity over the last you know 30 years since these polls have been have been done. Peña Nieto has you know a 17 percent approval rating. That's because everybody sees what's happening. He's not actually trying to solve the problems. He is the problem. It's not just about him, but the entire political system um, is really starting to collapse and in the world. Uh -huh. All righty. Well, Professor John Ackerman, thank you for your time.